two. Hello everybody, welcome to Nothing Exempt. Today is a special episode number three in our island series. So, the special island on the menu for today, the Cayman Islands. Why do you think we picked that, Mr. Hedge Fund Manager Nick Pardini? Because they're interesting and I find islands that have a lot of um, financial activity and tax havens to be interesting. You you find tax havens interesting? Yeah. Hold hold the phone. Uh, stop airing the K- Kardashians. Here comes the the tax haven show to replace it, hosted by Nick Bardini. <laughs> but Nick, that'd be like the next Anthony Bourdain. Nick Bardini goes to tax havens, <laughs> and he travels around the world and does financial transactions. Like he, like Anthony used to eat at restaurants. And reviews of the experience. <laughs> I found the banker very friendly. He, I had an account open in minutes. Yeah, he had no problem transferring it from euros to dollars to gold to whatever I want it to be. <laughs> now there's there's a show that may get less viewers than nothing exempt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think it ever get funded. Oh, Nick, you can self-fund your own Hollywood ex- extravaganza someday, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. Nick goes to tax havens. I mean, what are you? Are... I'm a travel show host. Nick's, Nick's havens. It could be like my retirement, along with getting my PhD in history. Especially if I decide not to run for office. I mean, why not? So much... Nick, I know this is an old joke that a lot of TV shows have, have talked about before. But I hope I get an honorary d- degree after you work for one so that I can have people call me doctor. <laughs> what? Well, that I mean, there's there's a countless TV shows where somebody's got an honorary degree and then they, like, were called doctor. It's. Yeah. I would totally do it in real life, though. If you give me an honorary degree, like, West L.A., polytechnic or some kind of like no one ever heard of school if they did it i would still be like excuse me it's doctor yeah i mean there is something about that my grandpa got an md and he was always dr pardini and he loved being called dr pardini okay so let's let's circle back to the cayman islands how many islands are there in the chain there are two and what Actually, there's three there's grand cayman a little came in and came in Brock and came in Brock. Yeah. And and how many people do you think live on these islands? Well, I mean, the total population is similar to Newport, a little less. It's about 60,000 people. And it's land wise about the size of like Newport Beach at like 200 at 102 square miles. Do they even have an international airport? Like, can you reach them from L.A. or do you have to stop? No. And- Unfortunately, you can't. I've looked it up because this is on my vacation list of places to go. This is the first one we did that neither of us have visited. Um, this is your vacation slash tax haven list of places to go. Yeah, yeah I like going to financial centers and tax havens. I, just... I imagine there's a flight from Kingston. No, um, the flights. I mean, I looked this up. You can fly from Houston. I think you fly from Dallas. You fly from Atlanta, Charlotte, and Miami. In the U.S., I think you can fly to Kingston and maybe some other Caribbean. I don't think you, and Toronto. You can't fly from Mexico, surprisingly. I'm not sure why that's surprising, but I mean, it's a lot closer to Mexico than it is to Toronto. I think New York. You can fly from New York as well. Yeah, but if the islands are English speaking and you want to go on vacation and you're Spanish speaking, aren't there like I don't know, 50 other locations you could go, including Cuba. Yeah, but the Cayman Islands, are, I think, are nicer than Cuba. I wouldn't know. I haven't been. It, look, it looks really nice on, on the internet, and I imagine that between cruise ships and bankers that it it, it makes for a nice life. Yeah, I mean, I like, one of my favorite financial resource platforms, Real Vision TV, is headquartered in the Cayman Islands. Like, what would you do if you lived there, Nick? Would you just 
trade from the beach? Pretty much. It'd be like when I lived in San Diego. Except I'd go swimming more. Oh, I'm trying to do Google Maps. And none of these roads have been driven in, in the Caymans by a Google Maps car yet. That yeah, is ridiculous. Well, it's kind of out of the way. Oh, oh, come on, Google. You can't fly there directly from Cupertino. Google, if you're going to print money, you need to spend it on fly, on driving around the Cayman Islands. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it on a map, it's like in between Cuba and Jamaica. And in, in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. It's not... It's... It, it's not super out of the way, but again, it's also not the most convenient place in the world to get to either. I'm sure Google could handle it. So, but where's anyways, what? What are some interesting facts that you have learned about this area? Well, I mean, it's one of the most um, successful economies in the world in terms of GDP per capita. And uh, where, GDP where, is, capita where does it rank? Who are its neighbors on GDP per capita? It's seventy four thousand dollars a year. So its neighbors are countries like Bermuda and Qatar. Well, Bermuda's not a country, but like places like Bermuda, Qatar, and um, Norway. And they did it without billions of dollars in offshore oil. No, they have billions of dollars in offshore entities. Yeah, they did it with good banking laws. <laughs> yeah. Um, there is in the history of the Cayman Islands, they have never levied an income tax, a capital gains tax, or any sort of wealth tax. Huh? It's almost like the free market can attract capital without any infringement from the government. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but as far as so, but when you're when you're there to deposit your whatever it's some hedge fund uh what what could you do like is is it different than the florida keys like get jet skis go on a yacht like i imagine water sports snor snorkeling surfing are, are those things that are what you do on the game yeah Islands? it's a much bigger island than the florida keys and so therefore you can do more stuff they have like a sea turtle like like nesting spot so like you can go, like, pet all the sea turtles close to the shore. And they have, like, a similar thing for rays, I think. And they have a lot of nice resorts. Hotels aren't cheap there, though. It's, like, 300 bucks a night, like, for, like, a decent hotel there, at least. And, um, yeah. And they have Georgetown, which is, like, a neat, like, other tropical vacation town, city thing in the Caribbean. And it's probably it's a lot safer and cleaner than other Caribbean islands. It's does up there with St. Bart's in terms of being upscale. Does everyone go to the big island? Are the yeah, are two smaller islands just much less populated and much less popular? Yeah. All the cruise ships go to Grand Cayman. The airport's in Grand Cayman. There are people who do live on the little islands, but they're kind of out of the way. That makes it almost more interesting to go to. I would almost rather go to the smaller ones just because they're out of the way. That's my inner tripster coming out. Yeah, I don't really know what's on the little islands, honestly. Well, hey, we're doing a show about them, so we're going to say um, probably some sand, maybe some Pacific uh, Atlantic Ocean. Uh, yeah, I mean, combined, they only have 2,100 people. Probably, maybe, electricity. <laughs> yeah. Of course they have electricity. If there's only 2,000 people, it's not of course. It's probably like photovoltaic. Yeah. Like you need to have... I wonder how many people you do need to have. But um, to be able to sustain pulling in petrol or something to, to have a your own power plant i would think it's in the neighborhood of five to ten thousand people before you do that actually i don't know you know you i'm sure a quick google search would tell me that it's five or two hundred but um yeah i bet it's photovoltaic 
I will find this out later and find out what kind of an idiot I was on the show. But that's part of nothing exempt. That's yeah, they're very the- strict about their um, work visas in the Cayman Islands. Well, everybody wants to be there, right? So yeah. I totally understand that. And there's one college there, the University College of the Cayman Islands. What what can you do there? I think it's probably just like any other school in the Caribbean. That doesn't tell me anything, Nick. It's just like any other school I don't know about. Ah, yeah. But I don't really know, and I don't okay, really. Okay, Nick. Care. Okay, I got I got the facts, Jack. Little Cayman has one yeah. grocery store slash hardware store, two liquor stores. So you may have. One place to buy groceries, but you can buy liquor two places. And I wonder if the people who own those are the same or they don't like each other. One full-service restaurant, one church, a rental car operation, two small souvenir shops, and a two-man police force, and a power station operated by Cayman Brock Power and Light. Okay, so, and a one-room schoolhouse. Yeah, and apparently their leader of their government um, of business, which is like one of their depart, like their equivalent of like um, their one of their department, like their office of management and budget. His name was Thomas Jefferson. It's a good name. Original. I like it. Yeah, he lived from forty one, nineteen forty one to two thousand six. Thomas C. Jefferson. Went into the news. So, Nick, but that's the thing. Nick, Those islands in Little Cayman have less going on than Balboa Island. Balboa Island is 3,000 people and a lot more stuff on it. Little Cayman's got 170. Oh, wow. So what's like – So that, do they even have like a grocery store on Little Cayman? I just, uh, I, just, I just named off everything they have. There are two liquor stores to provide a population of 170 with liquor. Oh, wow. It must be a partying bunch. Or those two guys don't like each other. <laughs> yeah, so then came so that means only two thousand live on Cayman Brock. One hundred and seventy people. Average height twelve meters above the sea. Yeah, it's a Cayman it's, it's, is known for its bird watching. <laughs> well, yeah, what else are you gonna do? <laughs> no, you swim and you go jet skiing and snorkel and do business and eat at nice restaurants. I mean, it's like any other vacation. It's like going to St. Bart's. What are you doing in St. Bart's? Oh, it's an estimated 1,500 iguanas. So you get outnumbered iguanas to people 10 to 1. What, Little Cayman? Yeah. So, um, it's only... Like- well, Ten miles long by one mile wide. It's a pretty small island. What, the whole Caymans or Little Cayman? Little Cayman. Oh. Yeah, that's a small. We should look at Cayman Brock. Nick, you should you should go on that and tell me all the cool things about it. But yeah, um, when it comes to the Cayman Islands, Brian, the other thing we have to mention is it's part of the United Kingdom. But it still kind of has its own laws in a way. It's kind of like Bermuda. Like, the UK is charged with foreign policy and a few other things, but they, for the most part, can do what they want. Could you get into the armed forces, into the UK British armed forces from the Caymans? Probably could. Oh, thanks for the probably. I mean, I, I don't really know, but it, it, you should be able to. Like, people in the Northern Mariana Islands go in the U.S. military. But we're like the most militarized people on the planet. We will let you in. You can join the military with just a green card. Really? Yes, sir. But wouldn't you have to be worried about loyalty? No. There's also the French Foreign Legion, and nobody's French in the French Foreign Legion. They're, 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 they're not ethnically French, but are they like foreign like ethnicities or French citizens? Or are they just Nick, you could join the French Foreign Legion if you qualify. I don't think I'd want to. I don't think you would either, and I don't think you'd qualify. Yeah, Cayman Brock um, 
is 19 kilometers long and two kilometers wide. Which for everybody else, that's about 12 miles by 1.2 miles. So it's about the same size as the other one. Apparently, Christopher Columbus was the first to see it in May 10th, 1503, when his ship was blown off course. I wonder why it got so many more people. I wonder, like, is there water there or something? Yeah, I mean, it's known as a big diving destination. Yeah, but the other island probably would have been a good one, too. I imagine it's because they've got some kind of resource advantage. Because nobody's living on the 150-person island. And rock climbing. It's probably that's farther away, too, from the main island. And, um, yeah, the local economy is mainly tourism. There's, there's one, there is a miniature airport there that flies to Grand Cayman. The, also, the, one, the term Brock is Gaelic for bluff, so there must be like a small mountain on it. And they can limit it seasonally. You can fly directly to Cayman Brock from Miami or Havana. And there's two elementary schools there. Oh, they got double the schools and probably a bunch more. Rooms. And there's two hotels and... Yeah, they're also known for making jewelry from a local stone known as Caymanite. That sounds like something Superman would be bothered by. That's probably why they call it the Cayman Brock, because the stone is what people went there for. I already just told you, Nick, it's called Cayman Brock because Brock is a Gaelic word for bluff. You weren't listening. Yeah, yeah I know, but they, call, they name it after the bluff because that's where they got the stones from. I bet it's just because there's a hill. All right, Ryan, will, will you ever see yourself going to the Cayman Islands? Uh, I don't like to watch myself, so probably I won't see it if it happens. I won't see myself doing it. Okay, but, I mean, come on. Would, would you go? <laughs> um, sure. You buying the tickets? Because I, I, I don't think it's on my top, to the top of my list of places to go. But it's not someplace I'd i'd sneer at it seems like it would be a beautiful place so it's on the top of my list to go up there with australia and new zealand well i've been there i've been to australia and new zealand yeah i haven't so other than those two this is number three on my list that's something i've been curious about for a long time and i also um i think it would be interesting and i know people who live there who lives there? Friends from long ago? Yeah, that's all I want to say on the show about that. Ex-girlfriend? No, not an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> okay, I got you to say more about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, but it was... Um, but yeah, I'd like to go there. It's And also they have really cool... They have some of the better conferences in the investment industry tend to be there. I don't blame them. What a beautiful place to have a conference. Yeah. A lot of conferences in the winter are in these like tropical warm places like Miami and the Cayman or San Diego. I get that. I totally get that. I, yeah. I think we should have all conferences in nice warm tropical places all the time. Well, in the summer, it's fine to have conferences in northern climates. I'd rather be in Hawaii than Toronto. Almost so all the time. Yeah, but you may not be able to get people to go because Hawaii is out of the way. Harder to get to than Toronto. So what? <laughs> so they don't come to my conference. I'm going to have a conference of one. And it's going to be in Hawaii. What's your conference going to be about, Brian? The Art of Relaxation. Or why don't you make an islands conference? The Island Forum. Dude, we should do that when we get real big, which if that ever happens, we do an Islands Forum. Yeah, on this show, you got three for the price of one. Yeah, we couldn't have turned this into three separate shows. Yeah, imagine us doing a show just on Little Cayman. 
Uh, here's a question: Do they actually have alligators? Cayman alligators, crocodiles, whatever it is. And that's spelled. That's different. Like a Cayman, is spelled C A I M A N. So you're saying they don't? It's, no, there's nothing connected to that. So you're saying there are no isles, crocodiles, or alligators in uh, in the Caymans? I'm ninety percent sure. I'll look it up actually in that one. There's fossils of crocodiles on the island. It's almost the same thing. Yeah. Cuba is the only Caribbean really island that notably has crocodiles. Well, I am sorry for Cuba for having crocodiles. Yeah, there are four species of snakes, though, on the Cayman Islands. Is one of them a banker? Financial snake? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get points at the Occupy Wall Street crowd, though, man. Okay. I know Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez is a big fan of our show. Oh, she probably is, Nick. I bet she's got a shirt that she made herself called Nothing Exempt, the podcast and all podcasts. <laughs> she, she probably believes in in podcast socialism, that we should uh, share our, our ideas with every other podcast. Yeah, just redistribute some of Joe Rogan's viewers to us. Okay, everybody, that's going to be it for Island Show number three. For some reason, this has been a popular sh set of shows to in. Let's see how number three does. I think our next one we should do is Vancouver Island. Uh, which I'm, op I'm open to. And if somebody who's listening wants a different island, shout us out. You go to reddit.com, nothing exempt, or Twitter, nothing exempt. Both are great. We will respond to you either way. Anything you want to share with us? Before we go, Nick. I uh, know. I mean, the people who have been to the Caymans or live in the Caymans who listen to this, tell us what you think about the experience. Do you think uh, Brian should make it a higher priority to go to the Caymans, or am I wasting my time having it so high on my travel list? Yeah, and and Nick, if they instituted an income tax that was I don't know forty percent tomorrow, would that affect your desire to go there? Not really. Oh, well, that's good news to hear. I don't believe it, but it's great news to hear. No, I, I, I don't benefit from it anyway. I'm an American citizen. Oh, I didn't realize that. But, yeah, you're right. You get taxed no matter what. So, yeah, it doesn't really help me uh, personally. But, I mean, I'd like to go there for other reasons. It's a nice island. It looks beautiful. I was looking at pictures while we talked, and, man, that looks amazing. Yeah, and it's, it's – and, and it's – First world level of development, which is rare in the Caribbean islands. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We will talk to you soon.